Let's get to the big story now. On the big story this morning, I host uh, young people who are keen about leadership and they want to start their journey of leadership. For many a leader, by the way, today in this country, you trace their roots back either to the university, high school, and that kind of thing. So the Makero Guild presidential race is on. Uh, voting is going to be this Friday, if I'm not mistaken. And I have some of the Guild presidential candidates here. Um, we should have more. Uh, some are not here yet, uh, yet they did confirm that they would come. But uh, this is like a train. It moves. And then you jump along the way and hopefully catch it. So we'll begin with those who are here so far. We have with us uh, Bayube Bruno. Bruno is an independent candidate, but um, he belongs to the Democratic Party. Along the way, he'll tell us why he decided to go independent, yet he belongs to a party. But anyhow, good morning, Bruno. How are you? Uh, fine, thank you. Good morning, sir. We also joined by Prize Mary. Uh, is that Mary you said it is? Yes. Prize Mary Ahimbisiwe. She is the NRM candidate. I was uh, joking with her and said you should have come here in yellow, that kind of thing. How are you this morning? I'm very fine. How are you, sir? Good. Good, thank you. Um, we're expecting to be joined by uh, Julian Taliwaku Vuvuzela. Uh, hopefully he will get here soon. We are also expecting to be joined by Silva Kent Luamaza. Hopefully he will come soon. Um, other candidates, we failed to get to them. Uh, there's another one called uh, Edward Chinene. Phone was off. We, we anyway tried to reach out to, to these candidates to make sure we have a balanced panel. So the reason we have two is not because we have not reached out to the others. Uh, we tried. Some we failed to get to them. Others confirmed, but they're not here yet. So anyhow, we'll move with those who are here. Um, Price, let me start with you. I'm happy that there's a lady in this race. There's actually another lady uh, in this race as well. Why, why are you running? Why are you running for guild president? Why did you decide I must do this? I have a passion for leadership. Mm. And I have an experience. I started all through from my primary level, secondary level, and up to now. I've been the current vice president, School of Women and Gender Studies. And then I am in the race now for guild mm. president. So when you say you have passion for leadership, you have experiences as a leader, and then what? Uh, what are you bringing to the table as guild president if you do win? Um, as a guild president, there is a lot to do. It is a career. It is a dream that you do not just have It's a have career? To, yes. You do not just have to Leadership sit. is a career? Or in this case, guild presidency? Guild president. Is a career? Well, it is in a way that when mm. you stand for a girl president, then you have a passion for it. You've been thinking, I must do this and I am going to, to provide leadership and I will bring out the issues that, that matter a lot for the Makerelians. What are those issues? I'm, I'm not getting those. You're talking about bringing out the issues that matter to the Makerelians and so on. What, what are those that you're going to focus on, you as you? We have a lot of challenges, starting from our levels in academics, social life, and all other aspects. Uh, in academics, we have a lot missing marks. We have a tolls of residences. We have a lot of issues, sanitation, food. And, and you're saying you're going to fix all these things. You're going to improve the food. You're going to improve the academic standards and it so on. It is all through a voice mm. that you are going to bridge the gap between the students and the administration. And it is from there that we'll have a consultative leadership. And then you can address these issues. Okay, I'll get back to you for some specificities. Uh, Bruno, you are running as an independent, yet you belong to a party. Yes. Why? Why are you being a rebel at this age? You hear the rebels are the older folks in parliament and so on. Why, anyway, did you decide to run oh. as an independent? Thank you very much for that question. I, I, am, I and my family are deeply interested in the DP, but I chose not to run for the UID flag because any of the irregularities that would happen in that particular party as regard the primaries. Uh, some of my contestants to date, like uh, Julian Taliwak of Ufuzera, are still contesting the outcomes of that particular race. So I thought it wise not to engage myself in that particular race because at heart, I have my kiddie. I've sacrificed each and everything, including my health, just like you can see right now, apparently I'm, on, I'm sick, but I still choose to man on and ensure that I deliver the best I can for this great university. So I decided that why should I run for these primaries, yet I know there will surely be irregularities, yet I will still have to run for what? For guild president. Why do you belong to a party which you know has got in your own words, uh, you, don't, you said you didn't trust the party primaries, and yet this is your party. So why do you belong where you are saying there are irregularities, you don't trust the processes and so on, yet you're still there? Why? Uh, apparently, the DP and UID are, are more or less the same, but quite different. So apparently in Makere, we have the UID, 
the youth Uganda Youth Democrats, while outside you have the Democratic Party. So I do believe that at least the Democratic Party out outside here is a bit more fair than the UID that we have in Makere, because these guys have been wooed by very many things, so I chose not to enter that politics. So you're running for guild president. Why? Um, you know, I'll tell you, I've interacted with the number of, over the years, because I'm at Makere doing my second degree. Yes. And uh, I keep many times hearing the same, same stuff. Uh, I moderated one of the guild presidential debates last year. Okay. And um, I had the same, same stuff. Looks like the same script. What are you bringing to the table? Uh, what I'm bringing to the table, I as Vaive Bruno, I'll tell, I'll be honest with you. I'm not basically the political type that's going to come here and tell you that, you know what, I'm coming with this idea, this ideology that's going to solve for you each and every problem we have in Makerere. I don't think anyone can humanly, can humanly make it can even make it and ensure that they solve all the problems you have in Makere. You have so many problems from missing marks, um, food, halls of residency, security, and all these. All these are problems, but I choose to run a problem-centered manifesto. I choose to select out a few problems, put them under the microscope, and figure out a way of solving each and every one of them. So at least by the end of my tenure, I have done what I promised I would do. Unlike other politicians, I'm not simply coming out here to make mm -hmm. all these promises. You talk about you, not about other politicians. Uh, so yes, I want to stick with yes, you. Yes, yes. So when you say missing marks and all these different things, I, it's nebulous. It's all over the place. I would like to hear that this is what I'm going to address. But when a candidate tells no. me, you see there's issues of missing marks, bad food, and so on, so what? Yes. Uh, because I'm a voter, for example, uh, although <laughs> I'm here in my capacity as a journalist here, yeah? but if you're speaking to a voter, the voter wants to know so what? Why should I give you my vote? I know about all those issues. They've been there for donkey's years. So what are you going to do about them? That's what uh, I would like to Number one, uh, for I the issue of missing marks, I've done my research on this. You see, missing marks actually result as a problem of continuous assessment. If you realize at the university, we have continuous assessment, then after this continuous assessment is added to the final paper. Now, continuous assessment has a very big issue. It, it is not clear or defined anywhere how many tests or courseworks a lecturer should give to the students. They are not defined. So a lecturer has the liberty to give, to give as many courseworks as they want, as many tests as they want at any time mm. of the semester. So sometimes you realize that people go in for their final papers without actually knowing their previous marks. So this is my humble suggestion. In case we can come up with a unified model of continuous assessment cutting across all colleges, whereby we know that uh, for this particular course unit, in this particular time frame, this number of courseworks and tests are supposed to be given. So by the time we enter these final papers, each and every one does know what they have for their continuous assessment. Then believe you me, this will at least solve the problem of missing marks to a greater extent. We've seen this work at your school, law school. So as I, I think, if we borrowed it to also these other schools, it would surely work. Price, what's the mandate of the guild president of Makere University? Um, I don't get your question. By mandate, I mean what's their role. Um, oh. If you have read the roles of a guild president, I want to imagine you first found out what the requirements are, what the roles of that office are, um, and then you decided president, to take it on. A guild president, first of all, is supposed to defend the constitution, the supremacy of the law. And secondly, Which constitution are we talking about? The guild presidential constitution of Makere University. There is a guild presidential constitution of Makere University? Yes. Is that so? Yes. yes. And then There's a guild presidential constitution. There is, there is a, a guild constitution. constitution. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And then secondly, a guild president has the powers to reshuffle his cabinet mm. if any any issues come along. And then a guild president, he is a, a co-signatory of all the transactions, the financial transactions that happen in the house. The guild president as well is supposed to, just like the core values of the university says, is supposed to ensure integrity of the university. Okay, um, I've heard about four things. You said the guild president is meant to protect the constitution, yes. is meant to, um, you've talked about defend the integrity of the university, you've talked about reshuffling the cabinet, and I'm trying to see how are you coming in to fit in all of this. Um, if you eventually do become guild president, mm -hmm of Makere University, Why, what legacy do you want to have left? Besides reshuffling cabinet, everyone can reshuffle cabinet. Mm -hmm. uh, defending the constitution, I don't even know what that means from your perspective. When you say defend the integrity of the university, again, I don't know what that means because there are people who will tell you the integrity levels have plummeted and so it's again not clear. Mm 
Mm. I don't know if you get me. Can you do the um, the girl president in a way that it is integrity? Can you defend? Can you be there for the university? Can you protect the name of the university? That is what I mean when I say integrity of the university. So if you make it as girl president, what legacy would you like to leave? We would like to leave a legacy that protects the name of the university in a way that even when there, there is chaos issues that arise, you are there and you can explain whatever goes on and you can tell the public that this is what happened, but we are doing this to make sure that we protect the name of the university. She talked about chaos. Um, I have had, I've, I've not followed very keenly, even though I'm a student there, uh, but uh, I've had folks say that your campaign has been riddled with uh, chaos. I don't know how far true that is. Um, is that the case? And, and if so, what are you doing to... Because you see many times, as a candidate, you're really not telling people, go and be chaotic, yeah, but that can happen. But then again, as a candidate, you, you have control over these, you're good people, and you can tell them, look, um, this is not a matter of life and death, so we can be orderly and that kind of thing. No. Is it happening, Bruno? No, to a smaller extent, there is some, there are some cases of chaos, uh, just like in any other campaign, I believe. All these other campaigns, given the given their two rivals, or given their, there is more than one camp and some serious competition, there will definitely be some chaos. But I'll not say that it has been overwhelming. No. The chaos is at least so the small case control. that is happening is irrelevant when people get hurt and so on. As long as it's one person, it's not a big deal. No, no. What I'm trying to say is it is negligible. You don't have any big serious cases of say injuries, someone dying. There have been some fights. I understand. Why. There have been small fights. And these are basically actually fights. So you're waiting for them to first escalate and become big no, fights? What I'm trying to say is these small fights, why I call them small is because they're not actually simply stemming from the girl dress. They're stemming from things that are way, way back and beyond the girl dress. Okay, um, again, I, I, I need to keep clarifying that uh, we invited several candidates. We're having only two here so far. Uh, others confirmed uh, that they will come. We hope that they'll eventually come. Taliwaku Julian Vuvuzela confirmed he would come. Uh, he's not here yet. Um, Silva Kent... Luamaza confirmed that he would come. He's not here yet. Uh, Kinene, we, we failed to get to him. We, we tried to make sure we have a balanced panel. Uh, but uh, these are the ones that are here. So in the meantime, we'll keep going with them. Hopefully, the others will arrive and find us along the way. Price, there have been strikes at this university, which many times eventually escalate into riots. Almost every year, there is a strike. Almost every year. What have you identified is the cause of these strikes? And uh, what's your remedy? What's your magic bullet if you do become guild president? Uh, we have had a lot of strikes that range from academics to social life, especially academics. Um, as a guild president, when I am in office, I ensure that I ensure that all these strikes that, that take place are going to be addressed. Um, the students' reasons as to why they strike are missing marks. We have, they are not on graduation lists. Um, they are, um, and so many other things. Therefore, as a girl president, the remedy, the bullet that I can shoot when I become the girl president is to make sure that there is assignments that are given in a way that they are really arranged very well and the students will not get issues of missing marks, missing their marks, missing their names on the graduation list. You forgive me, but you say it so casually and yet <laughs> I would like to think it's a big issue. That's why, you know, strikes have gone on for a while. So when you say you'll make sure that everything is arranged such that there are no strikes, I, I, I don't find that convincing. And the student in me keeps coming up because like I told you, I'm a student at the university for mm -hmm. the second time. So when you say you're going to make sure everything is organized such that it doesn't happen again, I'm thinking, what exactly are you saying? One of the other issues uh, is that uh, lecturers keep demanding for pay. You know that currently there are some lecturers who are not teaching for the evening programs. Why? Because they've not been incentivized. There was a promise to them that uh, beyond the 5 p.m. when you teach, you'll be incentivized for that. It has not happened, and so they'll go on strike. And many times when there's a teacher's strike, the students go on strike as well, and there gets to be a riot at times, yeah? So I would like to hear some ocular evidence of this is what I'm going to attempt to do. Because when you say you're going to arrange everything such that it's organized and there are no strikes, I, I don't see what you are saying or hearing. Specifically, if mm. I can talk about accountability, that is in, in paying the, the, the staff and the non-teaching staff into the, st to the delivering the services that they're supposed to provide. 
you need to first get to know how much money does the, the university earn and what are the expenditures. Do you know how much it is? Well, I may not know the main figure. Yes, the candidate, you should have figured this out because you draw, you're drawing plans, yeah? So yes. if you're going to convince students, you're going to say, by the way, this is how much you collect, this is how much is used, so there's a balance which is not accounted for. I am going to make sure it's accounted for. And I'm so actually cool. giving you campaign tips now. <laughs> and now for those transactions, you need to get to know how much is spent and then how can we balance all these expenditures and earnings so that this one can be satisfied and this other part is satisfied. Because you're not going to say, now we need to pay the lecturers seven million when you, let's say, when you were supposed to get them two million. Therefore, in that to balance that to get to know how much the university does it. Does it, does, it, does it earn and then what it spends? And therefore, that one will make an understanding for both the teaching and the non-teaching staff and the student body at large. Bruno, there are many folks at the university who have misgivings about the Guild President's Office. Um, they look at it as uh, it's been emasculated over time. Authority and power has been taken away from it. They look at it as a presidency with an office that does not have much authority. Uh, yes, there is the pomp and glare and flair of it. Guild president, there is the budget and that kind of thing. But do you think this office actually has real authority? Real authority that can contribute significantly to the transformation of that university? Yes, I do think actually this office has a lot, more than enough authority that can contribute to the significant changing of our institution and make it look like what you want to look. Just that the prob there is only one problem. The problem is the leadership at our very own level as students. You see, as we are vying for these posts, as we are vying to be guild president, there is always, a, there is always an agenda as, as to why someone is vying for this particular post. Now, along the years, we've been unfortunate that the people we've kept on getting are people who have come in with their own selfish interests. These people have come in, they've worked with people with these very nice oratory skills and good speeches, and at the end of the day when they get into office, they forget their voters and they forget all their outright promises and simply do not deliver. Why? Because they never had the university at heart in the first place. So I really do think if this time round we get a person who really has the university at heart and is willing to go that extra mile and serve this great institution, believe you me, it will stand out and even you yourself will notice it that this office is still as powerful as it was and has the power to ensure that the university looks just like the way you want it to. And you think you're that person? I am that person because I have definitely proved beyond reasonable doubt. I've put my health on the line uh, last semester. You keep using the health card. Uh, and not sorry not about your illness, but I'm thinking, you know, don't capitalize so much on that because then it becomes petty. No, Everyone no. falls sick every so often. So when you say you put your life on the line, for us as students, I'm thinking you're actually getting cheap. What do you mean by that? Not just my health on the line. Even last semester, because of the love I have for my university, mm. I will tell you, last semester when we went to Busitema for our game, we were, we were suspended from the University Football League. Uh, all of us got to know about it. I went to the guild president in person, tried to plead with the guild president to at least file a case and ensure that we get maybe a temporary injunction or a court order so that our boys who had put in a lot of their time, who had sacrificed a lot, so at, at least they could get back into this league and continue playing. Nothing was done. I tried all my level best. Still, I, as a humble student, had to get into my own very little resources and file a case to ensure that the Macquarie University football team is reinstated into the University Football League. I believe that alone even goes to show you how much I treasure and have this institution at heart. Let me tell you something, you candidates, and um, it is sad, of course, it's only the two of you that are here. Uh, like I was saying, we invited several. They confirmed to come. We have empty chairs across the line, yeah? Uh, we don't want to show them to because it looks odd, but uh, we've got empty chairs here which are waiting to be filled, hopefully within good time, but other candidates should be here. But anyway, for those of you that are here, you see, I... I've had candidates who even sounded better than you sound in yes. as far as promises are concerned. Yes. Uh, because like I told you, this is my second degree at that university. Yes. But you see, many times the nice, good talking candidates, eventually when they get to office, they become something else altogether. I don't know what evaporates out of them. And so I'm thinking, so you are sounding this good. You know, you look like you know your things. You're making good promises. Why should we believe you? Because um, we have been let down by several others. There's people that get elected overwhelmingly. I'm sure you've done your research at the university, overwhelmingly. But by the time their term of office comes to an end, everybody's thinking, what is this we got into that office? You know, so I'm thinking, why should we believe you people? Why should we believe you, Price, for example? Why should the students of the university, Makere, believe you? 
Um, I stand for action and service, not just a position or a title. And I've always told the students in rallies and debates that we have had as so far. I stand for action and service. I am not interested in getting into power, but rather office. And I, I pledge that I will do that. I will do consultative and inclusive leadership, regardless of our political affiliations, age, uh, gender, and culture. Wherever we come from, all, we all affiliate ourselves to Makere University and fight for the common cause. And Bruno, why, why should the students believe you? You say you've laid down your health. The people have laid down a lot more than you before, but they yes, became yes. a total mess. And here you are saying you should be believed. Why? I think I should be believed. Actually, I know I should be believed because at least as far as I've explained to you, you now know that even in my humble capacity as a student, I've tried to put up a fight for my great institution. So why, why, do you, why in the world would you think that when I get into office, I would simply stop at that? I have to protect my reputation. I have this institution at heart, and that's what counts most. It's about the passion one has for something they are doing that can get them to the farthest point that they can get. Let's talk a bit about accountability. Uh, the Guild office has loads of money, uh, huge monies. In fact, there's a ministry in this country that doesn't get as much money as your Guild office, you good people. And almost each year, there are queries about accountability. The current Guild president, I'm told, he is uh, being put to task to explain certain amounts which have not been accounted for. I hope he has, or eventually he will. And, and here is an office with so much money at your disposal, your young people, you have certainly not you know, seen or ever heard of these money. Then all of a sudden, it is at the disposal of your pen and signature. What's your plan regarding that? There is a particular guild president many years ago, I forget which year it was, uh, called Ronald Mukasa. I don't know if you have heard of him. Do your research. Uh, that's one of the very few guild presidents who ever returned money at the end of their term of office said, look, this is the accountability, this is how much money we're given, this is what we have used, this is the balance, here it is. It, it, it never happens at that university. Actually, almost each year, people are being put to task to explain, can you account for this, can you account for the other? What's your people's plan? As far as accountability is concerned, I particularly, my plan is, one, to ensure that we have a transparent leadership, transparent leadership whereby we get to know as the guild, how much have we been given? Then we also bring these other me these other media platforms on board and keep them in check, telling them. What do you mean by media platforms? Uh, let's say Campus B and uh, all these other tabloids that we work with in the university. We could keep on telling them and telling them how much we've spent on what. And at the end of the day, we could also do a forensic audit to ensure that at least no money goes missing. Because you see, some of us are interested in this, in this office is not particularly to make money. We are not business people. We are here to serve the people. We've heard that from several others. And I'm not saying you are not, um, if you get me correctly. Yeah? I'm just saying I've heard that from one politician, too many, uh, yet in turn it's a different situation altogether. But anyway, what's your plan, Price? Uh, we have had the innovation of ad hoc committee. It is that committee that puts whatever it does in writing. And that is one of the things that will articulate all these issues about finance, transactions, and all the money in the house. And the other thing is consultative leadership. How best can we consult from the students' leadership, sorry, from the students' body and the administration, and therefore as a guild president, to account for that money? It will need supervision, close supervision, put it in report writing, and as well monitoring those transactions. Have you folks ever thought of, um, you see, with every company, even when you start your own company, there gets to be a board. That there are certain people that uh, either you choose or you are helped by a group of people that let's appoint these people who will superintend over us. Um, I know you will say, well, you know, the people that vote for us at the university, those are our bosses. You know, you know for a fact it's even harder to account to them. But that you think of, let's have a small group of people that will be a board of sorts that will oversee the work that we do that will look at our records, that will look at our deliverables, and people to hold us accountable every so often and give us a check and say, you promised this, this is how far you have come, you received these monies, how are you utilizing them? Is that an idea that has ever crossed any of you good people? Uh, it hadn't crossed my mind in particular, but I really think that would actually help us for the good service delivery that we look forward to. 
and I think it has no problem. I would actually take it on. The several promises that you people have made at campaign rallies and so on, incredible promises. Some of you make interesting promises. I told you I moderated <laughs> last year's debate and uh, the current guild president, the outgoing, one of his major promises was that he was going to build a flyover <laughs> from Chikoni to the university. I asked, so what is that about? That you see students find it hard to cross from Chikoni hostels to the university. You know, so I'm going to make sure I build a flyover to get to the university. I thought it was a preposterous promise, ridiculous to the letter, because is, is that one of the biggest needs that the university does have? Anyway, I told him, if you win, uh, your time is going to come to an end and you will not have fulfilled that. I'm not a prophet. Some things are just common sense. Have you critically thought about the promises that you have made and do you think they are doable, they are achievable? Well, to me, one of the things that I've told my, my voters is one, I will not promise heaven on earth in the, f in the nine months of office, but we are setting a new pace of the leadership. We are setting a new trend that is going to be different from, from the rest that we have always had. What do you mean by that, different from the rest that we have always had? Um, I told you, my core values is to serve and act, not just by position. Prize has been a good president of Bakere University. That is not enough. And just like I told you, I'm not getting into power. We are getting into office to serve the students to the best of it. It's interesting. You talk about uh, you are going to serve. You belong to a political party. Yes. Uh, your political party head, uh, he says he's not a servant of the people. And uh, here is his kada who is saying she is a servant. <laughs> and perhaps let's talk a bit about politics, having infiltrated the university. Is it a good thing, you think? Because parties have... Um, seconded candidates and said this is our person that, that's why they are primaries is, is it a good thing you think or do you like i've had some people say you know what let students be students let's allow them to be without the infiltration of political parties and yet others will say but wait a minute this is the start of the national level thing yeah so why not uh, i personally i do not have a problem with uh, these political parties being within the university and us taking us using these political parties as we maybe vie for these posts. Because basically, these political parties, as you, as you look forward to uh, joining national politics and all these other things, these political parties do count a lot. So in my opinion, there's no problem with these political parties actually being within the universities. I think students shouldn't, di shouldn't just be left to be students, but rather should actually choose where they belong and fight for what they believe in. Because the student role in national leadership is actually very, very big if you do your research very well, right across the globe. Praise. I had um, the last, last year's uh, NRM candidate who was a lady like yourself, I heard from students. Some shunned her saying, you know, you look like you can deliver and so on, but we shall not vote for you because of your party. I had that. Uh, and, and so that can happen. Do you feel that that can be your undoing, that some people will say because of your party, we shall not vote for you? And yet probably as an individual, you perhaps had what it takes. One of the things I want to tell the viewers is, especially Makarians, we have voted opposition leaders all through. These are the people that come off Raj into thinking that they are going to address our issues. But then I am the password. I am a direct person who can, who can access the, the patron, and that is our president, the president of the Republic of Uganda. And therefore, the opposition leaders could have a limit to get to him and probably get some, get what they're supposed to get for the university. And because I belong to his party, I am a cadre, I am a member. I therefore pledge that I will get, um, I will get a better access to him and deliver to the students. Prize, isn't that one of the biggest problems this country has? The breakdown of institutions, individuals that become institutions, mm. that only those who have access to the president will get things done. I, I find that quixotic that if I don't have access to the president, then I'll not get social services. And I've had the president go around on campaign rallies on these by-elections saying, look, vote for somebody uh, who belongs to my party will access me directly, others you'll be blocking the straw. And I think that's one of the biggest leadership goofs, that because you can access the president, then there will be service delivery, that if he cannot access the president, then there is a problem. I thought, matter of fact, that the president is president for everybody. That if there are issues at the university and there's a student leader, you know, regardless of the party, they should be able to access him. But even away from that, that he should get to deliver. So it is tethered according to you 
to who has access to the president, who can reach him easily, that's problematic. It's not at all. It depends on how you have understood it. Because if you can compare how we have had these leaders and what they deliver to us, why don't we have a change? Why don't we have to set a new pace of leadership? I mean, if we have voted FDC, we voted all these other parties, and they have done significantly nothing, let's change this trail and then we can revive the glory of the party. We are but that university has had some NRM uh, guild presidents yes, too. Yes, and there, if I can give you an example, we received the first and last ambulance for the university hospital. That was by Gerard Karanga, and we have never received any other. Don't we need more? He didn't belong to the NRM, so that he now did. it actually flows your he argument did. that he must he belong. He did. He did. Gerard Karanga. Yes. He Gerard. Was yes, he was affiliated to that to that to that party, <laughs> the NRM <laughs> party. Gerard and Karuhanga uh, stood for the guild presidency on the FDC ticket. I was at the university for my first degree then. Mm. So which NRM are you talking about that you belong to? Therefore, I mean, I mean, if we, if I am the password, I am the password of the, of the students to get close to the, to the, to the, to the patron of the, to the patron of my party. And therefore, this is in a way that it is going to be a bit, a bit easy compared to the opposition leaders. Interesting. Um, anyhow, we have been joined by uh, another candidate who, uh, to him, 7.30 a.m. means uh, 7, uh, no, means 8.23 a.m. Good morning, sir. Morning to you, sir. How are you? I'm good. I thought one of the qualities of leadership is good timekeeping. Why are you late? Yeah, a bit lengthy, but all the way, the jam, and then um, we first went somewhere and before we came here, so it oh, was... Oh, so, so you made an appointment for here at 7.30 a.m., yeah. but uh, when you woke up, you realized, no, this is not as important. Let me first run and do no, a few no, other things. No, 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 no. Mm. This was so important, but this person channeled my way, so... so Anyway, you just need to learn these things when you're still young, uh, that you need to be no excuse leaders. Mm. Uh, people are not interested in your reasons. If you become guild president, they're interested in delivery, that you get to deliver. When you say you're going to do something, you do it. When you say I will be at this place at 7.30, you are there. If you're not able to, you communicate. You did not communicate to me that you're going to run late, did you? Yeah, I did. So that's a goof on your part as a leader. Um, anyway, so what's your plan? You're running for guild president. Why? What's your plan? Yeah, my plan is to deliver services to the rest of my students, first of all. Uh, my plan is to build my career. My plan is uh, a bit length. Yeah, I need to work on the issues that have been in Makerere University. There has been attendance of uh, philanthropic de service delivery. We, we pay for these services, but thereafter we are forced to, you know, it is more of charity way. These people that, that are delivering to us these services are delivering them to us in a, a, a manner that is, you know, they are treating us like they are helping us out, yet we are paying for these services. So we need to handle this as Makerians. And then we also need to handle a lot of challenges at Makere, um, gender balance issues, uh, girls, uh, when you talk about sexual harassment, uh, we have a committee that handles that, but the representation of the student's body is minimum, and this limits the way how, you know, this challenge should be handled. Yeah, the area is limited because on a committee of 14, there are only two students. So what it means is these two students will be intimidated by the rest of the people, and they, they actually will not speak out loud. They just hold it low because these people are big and they have a say in the university. So when we have these committees, because the numbers of the students are more than the numbers of the staff, the staff members, let these committees that are helping out students have at least 50-50% uh, representation. Kent, uh, Kent is your other name, right? Kent, Kent is a guild aspirant. Okay, anyway. He's independent. Uh, no, I, I, I thought that's your other name. W when you say that uh, you 
are running, one of the reasons you're running is to build your career. Mm. What do you mean by that? Mm. That's one of the reasons you gave to build your career. So yes, I'm asking, yes, what yes. did you mean by that? I meant uh, this is a ground. It's a ground um, for my. This is a ground to, 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 to for the next step in life. Hmm? Which step is that? Uh, so you're saying you are using uh, this guild presidential race mm. as a stepping stool. You're not so interested in, say, you know, serving the students of Makere. You no, no, are no. I, I need probably the, I eyeing a municipality for MP no, somewhere. No, 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 and you're no, saying... No. Uh, not basically that. Which but there, there wouldn't be a problem with that per se. Uh, mm. But, uh, you know, it's, it's okay to be honest. Yeah, but then what, uh, what I need to do, I, I need to serve here because there are a lot of issues that we need to sort out at Makere University and use it as uh, in a way I will have attained something and the university will attain a, a job well done from me. Yeah. So you as Samuel Nwataho, um, at the end of your, your presidency, if you do win, what legacy do you want to leave? I want to leave a legacy at Makere University of, uh, you know, a service that is free and fair, then um, I want to leave a, a legacy of um, mm, that perfect service delivery, yeah, during my time. Then, uh, yeah, I'm basically maximizing efficiency and effectiveness during my service. Interesting. Um, somebody did hint on uh, this whole sex for Max issue and cheating and, and, and so on. It's affected students a great deal. I don't know. What, what is your plan, Bruno, if you do become the student's leader? Uh, sex for Max is very complicated. Okay, it's quite a bit complicated. But my plan as, as regard handling that is one, number one, if you're trying to this issue, it is one of, all, first of all, you need to find out who is most affected. Number one, the most aff affected party is the girl. Now, if we can empower this girl child and also not only empower her, but also give her freedom and freedom to, you know, report and be able to make a sort of a committee whereby they can come to us and tell us, you know, what this lecture sexually harassed me and all that, without them actually being put out into the spotlight and them being spotted by everyone and so becoming, getting that attention from everyone which makes them feel really uncomfortable. I think that would actually help us so, 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 so much. Price, do you think there's a good working relationship between students and university management? At some point, it looks like the two are always at loggerheads and there's always a lot more fighting than, you know what, let's try and fix these issues. Perhaps when they say to fix them, the other suggests this. This one says, no, you've got to meet me at my end. A, 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 no, no, nobody seems to want to come to a middle ground of sorts. And that's problematic. That's why there will always be strikes upon strikes upon strikes. I will answer this to the previous question of sexual harassment. Because I'm a lady, I do gender studies. I agitate for gender empowerment and equality. Uh, for sexual harassment, we have had a lot of a lot of issues arising from girls being harassed by fellow students and probably and probably lecturers. There has been a direct way of addressing this by applying directly to the vice chancellor. But here comes a problem: even when you find the vice chancellor is not there. He's not there for a week and will not will not sit with that problem. And therefore, I will agitate for a sex, a sex harassment tribunal from where it is there that guarantees a student to, to, to get there to the tribunal and how or his, his, his issues are, are addressed because that tribunal is works hand in hand with the courts of law and, and that, will, that one will be addressed. Someone will forgive my color profiling, but you see colors in this country mean many different things. You're in a yellow tie. Uh, are you in any way affiliated to the NRM? You're not the NRM official candidate. She is, mm -hmm. uh, even though she's wearing his party colors. Mm -hmm. But anyway, maybe these colors mm -hmm. are just colors. They existed before. Mm -hmm. These are your political parties, and they will be here even after your political parties have long gone, been gone. Mm -hmm. Do you any have any affiliation? Not much. Um, when you say not much, is that a bit? Not quite. What do you mean? It probably means I'm affiliated, but to a limited extent. 
why are you not committed? Because we want leaders, mm. the students of Makere want leaders who are committed. So you either for something or not for it. So when you say not much, quite a bit, what, what do you mean? Because there is an official flag bearer, mm. then I am not the official flag bearer. So you are a rebel? In no, other no. <laughs> no, no, I'm not a rebel. Because why didn't you respect the rules? If the rules say, you know, go, mm. go, go for primaries, the one that wins mm. takes the day, the rest of you should back that one. Why didn't you do that? Mm, uh, by the our primaries were a bit, um, you know, they were sabotaged. They never happened. So I... There were no primaries for prize to become the flag bearer? Yes. What yes. happened? We in the rest together, mm. me and her. But um, on the day of, of, of primaries, we happened not to have our primaries that were sabotaged. And when they were sabotaged, um, I, I got the legitimacy to go ahead. But even then, she had taken a step ahead. Uh, so me, I held it back. I, I had to continue my duty because there is no law that stops me from conducting my work and her. So. So, Price, this whole candidature thing is not only for president of Uganda or NRM party chairman. It also comes down to your level. You were handpicked as the sole candidate, at least according to him. No, no, no. The fact that we are on a national television, there are some things you do not need to disclose. Eh. Because after all, no, yes, listen then. to me. <laughs> after all, we are not going to discuss how we did this and how we came about with it. I thought it's very important. How you become a flag bearer is important. Yes. It's possible you became a flag bearer by rigging by bribing, and you think that's not important it for your voters to know? It was so democratic. What happened? How, did, how was it carried out? Well, if I'm to start the process, we had our primaries on 13th, was it? 13th mm. of February. And it was so democratic in a way that I was given the guarantee to vote and he was also How many candidates were in that race? How many voters were there? We were two. Mm -hmm. We were two contenders. And we did our primaries very well. Um, I won with 17 votes and he got 12 and the three were invalid by the delegates who were there to vote. You got 17 votes? Yes. He got 12? Yes. Who, who were these voters? The voters were the NRM delegates, Makere chapter. So Samuel, you're the one telling a lie now because you're saying the election was sabotaged. Okay, okay, okay. To, 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 to add a voice, sir. Mm -hmm. To add a voice, sir. That day 13th, uh, we had ghost delegates. You know, the people to vote uh, and decide who is to become the official flag bearer. And not, uh, not everyone in Makere does that. There are delegates that do that. So the delegates that were provided to us had already left Makere University. And more to that, you know, for any election to be legit, it has to have at least 50% of the delegates available for the voting. So the 50% was not there, you know? And then, more to that, we had decided before that we are going to bring two, commit two delegates, uh, two, two uh, kinds of delegates, the new and the old delegates, 30-30, getting a representation of 30-30. So when the day reached, we happened to only have uh, delegates who are already out of Makere University. So me who had strategized on ground and I had my people and we, we are certain that we are going to vote, we did not vote. So what happened this day, the voting that took place was cancelled because the paper, before, actually the counting did not end. The boxes were taken away before the counting was ended. I don't know how she concluded <laughs> with the results. <laughs> anyway, then we, we organized for the voting on the next day, which was uh, which, uh, on 17th, which was a Thursday. So on Thursday, that is when the sabotage was. I, I, I opened a report because uh, my counterpart brought in the people, the mafias that fought the people that this had come. This your counterpart? Yes. Brought yes. in mafias? Yeah, that fought my, my, the people that had come to vote. I opened a report on the police at Makere University. Anyway, that we will we'll leave you folks to sort out your internal <laughs> party issues. Hopefully you will. <laughs> well, do you have political ambitions beyond this? Beyond running for guild president of Makere, whether or not you win? Uh, yes, I do. What are those? Uh, I look forward. And number one, if given I can deliver the good service, which by I know I can, given the opportunity to deliver the very good services I intend to deliver at this great university, I intend to also 
in any other community I'll be, I intend to also agitate for other positions of leadership because wherever I've been, from my primary, as entertainment, entertainment minister in my secondary, as head prefect, etc. High school, which by, if you went back and asked, I think I did a good job. Actually, I do know I did a good job. If you went back and asked those people, so even at Macquarie University, given the opportunity, I'll ensure that I do a, even a better job. And in every other community I will go to, I think it's just humble enough for me and Christian enough for me to ensure that at least everywhere I am, at, at least I try to impact onto the society. So for you, this is a career manner. of sorts. It's not exactly a career. I just have leadership at heart and just feel like ever I am, I think I should at least try as much as I can to ensure that at least I leave that place better than I found it. Praise, I know there's people that have supported you and continue to, and uh, many times I worry for you candidates, you know, because when you eventually, if you eventually make it, there's, there's many people that you have got to please and that can, you know, get you off track. There is campaign manager, there are these people that have been running after you and so on. Not so much because they believe in your leadership credentials. Perhaps there are others, without a doubt. But there are those who are looking for what am I going to gain out of your presidency if you do become. Does that worry you? It doesn't. It doesn't? Yes. That's interesting. Meaning you have a solution for it. What's that? Um, the fact that I am, I am so much connected to those people that are in for me. They are supporting for me. And they want to see me have that victory. I will not have to give them explanations why I won and why do I have this and, uh, and, how to and what to provide to them. And therefore seeing me get to victory, it will as well make them smile and happy because that is the fight that we've gone for and it is going to be a battle and the destiny. So is your win for them is just a smile and a happiness? Yes, mm -hmm. honestly. Interesting. All right, we're going to do this. My time is up. I'm going to give each of you 30 seconds strictly to have a final one. Let me begin with you, Samuel. 30 seconds. Oh, thank you so much for hosting us. Uh, my name is Nwata Hochitondo Samuel, Gilda Aspirant Makere University. I intend to serve the student's body. Uh, yeah, their needs are my deeds. Thank you so much. Okay, and then prize? My slogan says, the lioness roars, and I am ready to roar for every Makerean at whatever case, at whatever cost it might be. And I promise to speak the truth, is even where it, it, it is hardest. And I am a leader that is going to serve and act, and not just be in position, just not in as a title or in power, but in office. Okay, and finally, Bruno. Uh, I want to take this opportunity. First of all, thank you, uh, moderator. Thank you all my, uh, my, my fellow aspirants for turning up for this occasion. I also want to thank each and every other Macalarian and everyone watching at large. And uh, finally, I want to ask you, most importantly, the Macalarians, please do not be woodwinked by uh, all these other promises we've kept on making, but please choose competency over any other thing. Let's choose the most competent leader for us, one who will deliver the Macalari that we all wish to see. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you to my guests. Thank you for coming through. I wish you the very best. Uh, of course, there can only be one winner. I hope that winner will be a good winner, and hopefully the others will be good losers. Anyway, um, of course, we, you know, we missed having the other candidates that uh, did not make it. We missed having Taliwaku Julian Vuvuzela, who confirmed he would come. Uh, same story with Silva Kent, uh, who did confirm he would come, and um, others where we failed to reach the others, but some had confirmed they did not come. We went with those that did come. Look, this is important. I would like to think that uh, we, we need to put the spotlight on leadership at this level because for many of your national leaders whom you cry about, they started their journey at this level. So it's good that we get to hear from these young people and uh, allow them the opportunity to shape their ideas because tomorrow they will be taking up these other big leadership positions. So let's, let's help them to put this act together so that tomorrow they become good leaders. That's it for the big story. Thank you for joining us. My name is Joel Senyonyi. Good morning.